Can you explain in brief how the soft technology works? Yeah, sure. I can give you a, an overview. So the challenge with, with a lot of textiles is that they're mixtures of different materials and that, that makes them really, really hard to, to separate because what we need to do to be able to recover those textiles and those materials is, is to separate them into a single single component. So, so what this technology does is, is to do exactly that. So it would take something like a, a blend of polyester and cotton, and that's a really, really common blend that you find in textiles and lots of the the clothes that we wear, the t-shirts and the other shirts and trousers and so on. A lot of these are cotton polyester blends, which makes them really hard to, to separate. So, so what the process does is it takes those two solids and it takes the cotton and it, it turns that into a cellulose powder and it leaves the polyester totally un, untouched. So the polyester can be recovered and, and turned in, into flake, into chips and to be made into other plastic materials. And then that, that uh, cellulose, powder can be washed away and uh, from, the, from the polyester and recovered and used in lots of different applications as well. So, so it's a really quite, quite a simple and effective process. What are the environmental savings and costs associated with the tech? Yeah, so it's the textiles, as, as we'll all appreciate, uh, there's so many of them around, there's so many volumes, people are buying lots and, and, and using them, and sometimes they get to the end of life and need to be, um, uh, something needs to happen to them. And unfortunately, at the moment, without solutions, a lot of these materials go into landfill. And, and so, so, so that's really what we're trying to avoid here is, is these materials going to landfill because they're actually really, really valuable. They're a resource to go forward. And if we can recover those materials, we, we avoid the, those landfills being filled up with textiles. But more importantly, we retain the value, the, the energy that went into making those materials in the first place, that's, that's retained to go forward into new products. So, so it's avoiding that landfill, but more, more importantly, it's, it's recovering those textiles and then being able to use those in advanced manufacturing going forward. And what further areas of research are you looking at? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's still lots to do in, in the textile space. Um, and the more we can use these materials for really exciting products, um, the better it will be. So, so the research that we're doing is uh, particularly looking at things like the cellulose powder and thinking what the, the highest value and most exciting applications we can do um, for those. Um, so we might be able to use them in, in particularly ad advanced material applications or to blend them with, with some biological applications as well that we're thinking about um, and use them maybe as catalysts and that kind of thing. So th there's lots of really cool things we can potentially do with that, with that cotton powder. Um, and then in other work that we're doing in, in textiles, we're, we're thinking about how to use uh, advanced bioengineering to, to generate protein dyes, for example, so that, that people can at home wash in different colors and wash them out as part of their, their normal uh, washing and, and um, processing of their clo clothes at home. So people have more fun with their clothes and hopefully again, uh, avoid them going to landfill if, if people can change the colors and customize them. So that's quite an exciting, fun project we're doing with some protein based dyes. Adrian, what makes it difficult to recycle textiles on an industry scale? I think the major difficulty is that the textiles are a not sorted or collected in a particularly useful way. They're often put into rubbish bins or they're put into collection bins or they're put at the back of the uh, back of the car park somewhere. So collection is difficult. But then from a more from a, a science point of view and a technology point of view, the hardest part is, is that 75% of these fibers will be blended. They'll be mixed together like polyester and cotton. And therefore, if you recycle them as they are, you just end up with a recycled polyester and cotton when you may want recycled polyester or you may want recycled cotton. So the, the challenge is actually separating those blends to produce a useful output rather than just a, a, well -meaning, a, a, a well meaningful output. Everyone wants to recycle but recycling to produce value is much harder. What will be done with the recovered plastic and cellulose powder made by Blocktex? So we see ourselves as a resource converter and we take our polyester and we convert that from fiber polyester 
and we convert it into polyester chips, which is then used in the injection molding industry, into the um, geofabrics industry, uh, where there's onshore demand in volume. And the cellulose, we put that into, um, into the built environment. So it goes into aggregates such as uh, glues, paints, adhesives, mortars, uh, where it acts as a natural coagulant. Um, but we don't try to get textiles back into textiles because there's no textile industry in Australia. Right. So it's more about raw materials for other industries rather than textiles. To absolutely. We, we, we absolutely refuse to be see ourselves as part of the waste industry. Um, the waste industry has an economic model, which I think is old fashioned and is a, it's, it's the same as the coal industry. It's just an old, in, it's an old model. We see ourselves as converters. So we take a resource that is in form A, and then through our process, we convert that resource into form B, and that resource is then sold, become an input into another industry. Are there any environmental risks to your technology and what will be the benefits? As part of our principles of Blocktex, we, we set out not to make another problem. So I think a lot, of, um, a lot of environmental science, a lot of environmental recycling methods, you really have to poke it really hard because there's a lot of bad stuff happens as, as well. And you have to be really clear that you're not sort of saying, look over there, I've done all this good stuff, but don't look over there, I've done all this bad stuff. At the end of our, at the end of our process, all that we produce is water. We use water, we use chemicals in our process, but we neutralize those chemicals during our process. So our, our, our output is separated polyester and cellulose and water. And we recycle that water and use it back into our, into our um, process. So the environmental, um, we, we don't have, we live a very, 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 very low environmental footprint because you can't claim to be an environmental company if you're just sort of marketing the good stuff that you do and hiding the bad stuff that you do. And a lot of that sadly does exist. Um, in terms of the environmental benefits, they're huge. Um, our um, engineering and maths tells us that for every kilogram of polyester cotton that we recycle, we offset around 30 kilograms of CO2 equivalent. So for every one kg of pillowcases, it offsets 30 kilograms of CO2. Yeah, that's extraordinary. Um, I think it's really interesting that the, we, we assume recycling is always going to be a completely holistic, no waste um, process, but a lot of the time it's not. If you look at the processes that uh, we say, well, we're going to recycle jeans into brand new cotton or into viscose. Well, no, you're not, because you're going to use uh, a process which has been in the wood pulp industry for a long time. But you're essentially going to use a wet spinning process, which contains nasty chemicals like carbon disulfide which are a very, very poor chemical. <laughs> and you really don't want to, but people choose to ignore that because, hey, I've got beautiful viscose, but is that the best way of doing it? Um, so I think there's a lot of interesting examples where you mention the word recycling and everyone gets warm and fuzzy, but you have mm -hmm. to be really careful that you understand how and what your chosen recycling partner is actually doing so you don't end up perhaps doing something you didn't think you were. That makes a lot of sense. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Look, I think um, we, we're really excited by Blocktech. So there's only three companies in the world doing this. Um, <clears throat> this. This Australian company will be the first to market commercially. It's been developed using um, scientific knowledge and minds and, and skills available within Australian universities. Um, the patents have been developed using those skills. So I think it's something we should be incredibly proud about and we should be talking about a lot more. Um, and the fact that for once we're taking university outputs and we're commercializing them at scale onshore rather than selling that technology offshore because you mentioned manufacturing and people usually run for the door. Um, I, think it's, I think it's something we should be very, very proud of and we should get behind universities at University of uh, Queensland and Queensland University of Tech Technology who've done a great job. Well, thank you very much for your time, Adrian. Thank you very much.